Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about real numbers. Well, what are real numbers? Are they like real men? Nah, they're not like real men. Real numbers are all the numbers that you're familiar with. Every number you can think of is a real number. And real numbers include several subsets. Integers are real numbers. Whole numbers are real numbers. Rational numbers are real numbers. We're going to make sure we understand what each of those are. And then we're also going to talk about opposites, absolute value, and operations with real numbers. So real numbers are all the numbers that you can think of. And you can see it includes pi, the square root of 2, minus 2 and a third, minus 18, 4, 642, any number you can think of is a real number. But there's certain classifications under real numbers, and we're going to use this Venn diagram to see if we can understand them. The first classification is rational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that could be written as a fraction. Now you can see outside the rational number circle we've got pi and the square root of 2. We've also got point one two three six five two eight and it goes on forever. The reason that those are not rational numbers is they do go on forever. As a decimal they go on forever so you could not find a single fraction that could describe that number. Pi goes on forever. 3.14 and then it just goes on forever so there's not a fraction that describes it. The same is true of the square root of 2. But rational numbers are numbers that could be written as a fraction. Now obviously one half a fraction. But is 25 a fraction? Well, sure it is. You could write that as 25 over 1, and it would equal 25, and it would be a rational number. Well, let's look at the next level of distinction. Those are integers. What separates an integer from a rational number? Well, there's no fractional component of an integer. It's just a number without a fraction attached to it. And there's one last classification we're going to look at. That's whole numbers. And whole numbers vary from integers in that whole numbers are always positive numbers, whereas the integers include both positive numbers and negative numbers. Place these numbers in the appropriate cells below. Some numbers may belong in more than one cell. So classify these numbers as either real numbers, rational numbers, integers, or whole numbers. And I promise you some of these will belong into more than one category. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then move forward to my answer. Okay, we're going to try to put these numbers into their proper category. And if your answer looks like this, then you've done a good job. First of all, real numbers. All these numbers are real numbers, so every number up above belongs in the real number classification. Second classification is rational numbers. Well, the only thing that wouldn't belong in rational numbers are numbers that can't be written as a fraction. And you remember pi can't be written as a fraction. So we took pi out, but all the other numbers uh, fit into rational numbers. What goes into integers? Well, just numbers that don't have a fractional component. So the only thing we put in integers were 28 and minus 8. And then whole numbers? Well, they're just the positive integers. So 28 moved over to whole numbers.
If a number is not a real number, then it's an imaginary number. And we're going to talk about imaginary numbers a little bit in a later lesson. But imaginary numbers can't be plotted on a number line. And any real number can be plotted on a number line. For instance, I can plot 7 on a number line. I can plot minus 9. I can plot 14.75. Or I can plot minus 17.5. So if you can put it on a number line, it's a real number. Now let's talk about another concept that I know you've been exposed to and hopefully you understand, but if not, pay attention, you'll get it. That's absolute value. We're going to look at two definitions of absolute value. The first is that absolute value is the distance of a real number from the origin. And the second definition, which many of you will find easier to understand, is an absolute value is the non-negative value of a number without regard to its sign. Let's look at some examples. What's the absolute value of 7? Well, it's the distance of the real number from the origin. 7 is 7 steps from 0. So 7 is the absolute value of 7. How about minus 9? Minus 9 is 9 steps from the origin. Now I don't care if those steps are forward or backward. I just need to know the number, the distance between the number and the origin. And the distance is 9 steps. So the absolute value of minus 9 is 9. Now that second definition says the absolute value is the non-negative value of a number without regard to its sign. Well, if you disregard the sign in front of minus 9, you get 9. And if you disregard the lack of a sign in front of 7, you get 7. So it's just the number without any positive or negative sign shown in front of it. Here's another concept that you need to understand, and you may have not been exposed to this, but it'll become useful to you as we get further into algebra because you use this concept in algebra to help manipulate equations. This concept is called opposites, and it's pretty easy. Two numbers that are the same distance from zero on the number line, but on opposite sides of zero are opposites. For instance, minus nine. What would be the opposite of minus 9? It would be plus 9. And one of the reasons they're opposites is because they, counter, they counteract each other and kind of make each other disappear. If I add minus 9 to 9, I get 0. In other words, if I combine opposites, they, they make each other disappear. Now, I bet all of you know how to add, subtract, and multiply, and divide, but we're, we're going to go through this anyway because I bet there's more than one of you that gets a little bit confused about when the answer should be positive and when the answer should be negative and, and exactly how that works. And thinking of addition and subtraction on a number line will help you eliminate any confusion about what the sign should be. So let's go through this. Let's talk about adding real numbers. In terms of a number line, when I add a real number, I move to the right on the number line. Let's look at an example. I've got 8 plus 6, and you know that 8 plus 6 is 14, but let's look at this on the number line. I start at 8, I move 6 to the right, I end up at 14. Well, how about subtracting real numbers? In terms of the number line, when I subtract a real number, I move to the left on the number line. How about this problem? 8 minus 6, and you know that 8 minus 6 is 2, but let's look at the number line. I start at 8, I move 6 to the left, and I end up at 2. Well, that's all well and good, but this one might confuse you. What if I had 8 minus 16? Hopefully you know that's minus 8, but let's see how that works on the, on the number line. I start at positive 8, 
but this time I go 16 steps to the left. The first eight of those steps take me down to zero, and I've got eight more steps into the negative numbers, so I end up at minus eight. And eight minus 16 is minus eight. Here's another way we can use the number line to help us understand addition and subtraction with negative numbers. Let's say we had 8 minus 12 equals what? I don't know what. Let's figure it out. 8 minus 12. 8. Is that positive or negative 8? Well, you know it's positive 8. So let's put that sign out there. Positive 8 minus 12 equals what? And we can start with the number line and start at zero. We can put a dot right at zero and then we can use that math problem uh, and the number line to, to figure out what the answer is. We're starting at zero and we're going to go positive eight. That's to the right. So we'll move eight spaces to the right. Now we'll move 12 spaces to the left. And what's our answer? Minus four. Here's something else that can be confusing. If I'm adding a negative number, or I'm subtracting a positive number, what, what, what do I end up doing? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, crying? I, I, well, it's real easy. If I've got a plus symbol and a negative symbol, if I'm adding a negative number, or if I'm subtracting a positive number, both of those mean subtract. 8 plus minus 6, or 8 minus plus 6, both mean 8 minus 6, which equals 2. Now, I know you're a very bright student, but I bet there may be occasions when you get a little bit confused about whether the answer should be positive or negative when you're multiplying a positive times a negative number, or dividing a negative by a positive number. Well, there's some simple rules that will help you remember what the answer should be, and here they are. If I'm multiplying a positive by a positive, or I'm dividing a positive by a positive, my answer is going to be positive. 6 times 5 is positive 30. Positive 6 divided by positive 2 is positive 3. How about if both the numbers are negative? If I multiply a negative times a negative, or if I divide a negative by a negative, my answer is going to be positive. Minus 6 times minus 5 is positive 30. But, if I have a mix of positive and negative numbers, then my answer is going to be negative. If I multiply or divide a positive number by a negative number, the results will be negative. Minus 6 times 5 equals minus 30. Or, if I've got a negative times or divided by a positive number, again, I'll get a negative number. So, positive plus positive will result in positive. Negative and negative will result in positive. But a mix, a positive and a negative, results in an answer that's negative. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. If you remember PEMDAS, then you won't have any trouble with this problem, I don't think. PEMDAS, it's the order of operations. We want to do parentheses first, exponents next, multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. Well, let's tackle it. We want to start with parentheses. And we've got this parentheses here, but there's no operation inside that parentheses for us to perform. It doesn't say 2 plus 3. It just says 2. So I can't change it. We'll leave that 2 exactly as it is. And there are no more parentheses. However, we do have this absolute value symbol right here. And we, we're going to treat absolute value in order of operations the same way we treat parentheses. So the first thing we're going to do is solve what's inside that, those absolute value signs. What is the absolute value of minus 4? It's positive 4. 
So now I'm going to bring down everything up above, everything up above. And the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the absolute value of minus 4 to positive 4. I brought six, minus 6 times 2 down. I brought a plus sign down. I changed that. I brought this down. I brought this down. I brought the equal signs down. Well, now what do we want to tackle next? We've done our parentheses, exponents. There are no exponents. So now we move on to multiplication. Well, there's one multiplication, minus 6 times 2. What is minus 6 times 2? Well, 6 times 2 is 12. So should the answer be positive 12 or negative 12? Well, first of all, remember, if you're mixing a positive and a negative in a multiplication or division problem, your answer is going to be negative. But if you forget that, just remember this. 6 times 2 is 12. Negative 6 times 2 couldn't be 12. It would have to be negative 12. It couldn't have the same answer as 6 times 2. So I'm going to change negative 6 times 2 to 12, and then I'm going to bring everything else down exactly as it was up above. Well, that's all our multiplication. There is no division. Now we just got addition and subtraction. So I'm going to start by doing minus 12 plus 4. Well, minus 12 plus 4 is minus 8. And now we got minus 8 minus 24. Minus 8 minus 24. Well, let's look at a number line. And I'm starting over here at minus 8. Here's my 0 over here. My positive numbers are off to the right. I start at minus 8, and I want to go to the left because I'm subtracting, and I want to go 24 spaces. That means I'm going to slide all the way over to minus 32. Minus 8 minus 24 equals minus 32. Now, 8 plus 24 is 32. But we're starting with minus 8, and we're going 24 more in that direction. So we get minus 32. That's our lesson on real numbers. Now it's time to test your skills with worksheets and quizzes that you can find at www.mastermath.info. Try those worksheets, try the quizzes, and come back and see us again real soon.